Welcome back to The Empowered Homeowner. This is a podcast where we share tips and tricks to help you maintain your home because it is the greatest investment of your life. So I am Beth Allen. I am a DIY expert, a contractor, and an educator. And today we are unfiltered. We are talking about the filters in your house. And I'll tell you right up, this is not fun and sexy material, but know what is fun and sexy? Being healthy, having clean air, having clean water, and having a house that is uh, energy efficient and appliances and devices that will last long and will perform the way they're supposed to. And I literally was on like a total tear this past weekend, changing all of the filters in my house. And we're going to talk about those devices because there are some things that you may not even realize have a filter and need any attention to start with. Um, We literally went from room to room around the house and even went out to the driveway to deal with some of the filters. Now, I do talk about this as an RN as well. Um, Some of you may not be aware, I'm also a registered nurse and being healthy is so important. And if we're not paying attention to our air and water filters in particular, we are really setting ourselves up for some health concerns. So it's important that we are taking time in the fall and the spring in particular, to do some maintenance. And then that we are scheduling these other maintenance activities, putting things on our calendars and making sure we're getting these things done. So let's talk first about um, where the filters are and why we have them. Now, your home has several filters, and the most common one is going to be in your HVAC system. That is your heating, ventilation, and air conditioning uh, unit. Now, Where else might you find one? Well, we've got filters and traps per se, things to collect particles that shouldn't make their way into our um, systems. We're talking refrigerator, range hood, even the vacuum, okay? And again, not to mention the car. And some people might balk at the idea of doing this work on their car, but these are DIY doable tasks. And literally, the car work took me less time than it did to set up a phone and record it. But the primary job of any filters or traps in your house is to collect um, food particles, pollen, dust, and even some microbes of bacteria and viruses. So these are important things. And yes, I'm tapping into my nursing skills. But we're going to go there for a minute. And let's talk about your nose hair. Your nose hair has a very important job. And that that is to filter out particulates so that they they don't get into your um, sinuses sinuses and into your airway. Now, Now, here's here's a little uh, nerdy information. information. The The, uh, um, nasal nasal hairs hairs are called vibrissae. Okay, vibrissae. And And they are very important. important. And And so are those filters. They're going to collect the the larger particles particles and keep them out of the system. Now, Now, if you are ignoring them and they get dirty and they get clogged up, you're not letting air flow efficiently, water flow efficiently. So not only are you having, you know, dirty um, buildup, you're losing the energy. So you're not, you know, you can pay a lot for that great air conditioning unit, but if you're not changing the filter on time, you're going to be paying more in energy output. And you're going to shorten the life of whatever it is that you have in your home. So let's talk about where some of the filters are. And then we're going to take a little deeper dive into each. How do you replace them? Where do you shop? What kind of filters do you need for each of these devices? And again, some of those odd things you may not even realize have a filter and need some attention from you. So the big one is, of course, your furnace. And when I say furnace, we're talking about if you have forced hot air heating and cooling, if you have vents, vents in the floors and in the walls, then you know that you have a unit that has a filter that needs to be changed. Now, I am shocked at so many times I have met new homeowners who are coming into a new property, and maybe they're met with a new type of you know, heating system than they had before. If you had baseboard heating or radiant heaters, radiators, you know, in an older home, and then you're in a new home that has forced hot air, yeah, there's a little bit more maintenance that you need to do. 
So what I want you to know is where's the manual? Because you need to understand what is the maintenance that that HVAC system needs. And for that forced hot air unit, there is a filter. And the filters come in various different sizes. So one, you need to know what is the right size of the filter for my unit. What size is it? Um, what style do I want? Because all of this matters. And most importantly, how do I change it? The location for the fil filters themselves can be in different spots based on the type of um, unit that you have and on the brand. Some of them have little trap doors. Some of them don't have a door and the filters just slide in. Some are on the side, some are on the bottom, some are on the top. I've seen some that are in a ceiling. If you have had um, perhaps central air added to an older home and you have the uh, components in the attic. So you need to take the time to understand where all these things are. And that does come down to the manual. So my first tip is if you don't know where the manual is for that HVAC system, there is a sticker on the unit that should have model information, the maker, and contact information. Go to the internet, use that cell phone to do a little research and find out what the manual is that you need. Most companies will email you a PDF of the manual so you don't have to worry about it. So I would suggest you print it out, put it in a Ziploc bag and tape it to the side of the system so that it's always there when you need it and you're not rummaging through your computer. So great to have that on hand. Now, we're going to dive a little deeper into the HVAC system, but the next thing is refrigerators. Air filters and water filters are on many of the modern refrigerators. And this is important because some people just don't realize that. If you have a water dispenser and an ice maker, you probably have a water filter built into your unit. And Again, you may also have an air filter. Now, we have a, a fridge. I guess it's about six, seven years old. And it does flash an alert for us right on the front of the refrigerator that the filters need to be changed. But if you don't have that kind of information, you got to check that manual again, right? That is your user guide to find out how often you should be changing those and then put it on the calendar. But beyond the fridge and the, the AC unit, where else do you have filters? We're talking about a water softener. If you have one of those, some units do, some units don't. Um, we've got air purifiers, the range hood, your dryers, aka the lint trap. Same concept. It is a filter of some sort. The um, humidifier, your dehumidifiers. Your dishwasher and washing machine also have traps that collect particles. And lastly, let's not forget, a lot of folks don't know that their Keurig has a filter. It's not just your coffee and tea pods that you're putting in there. You need to be changing the filter as well. So we're going to break down all about when and where and how you go about doing these things. So it's not just that you're going to have, um, you know, cleaner functioning systems, you're going to get cleaner output. You're going to get better tasting coffee. You're going to get cleaner water. You're going to have better air and you're going to have less mold and mildew and dust and all of these things. So if you're changing those filters, you're going to notice a difference when you are doing that um, with consistency. So let's talk about that most common filter, which is the HVAC. Again, the furnace filter. So what we need to think about is what is that schedule for us? Most units, again, I'm saying most units, you need to change the filter every three months. That is most uh, manufacturer's recommendation. Change the filter every three months. Now, if you have a large unit that has a big, like six inch deep um, filter, then those might be on a six month schedule. Again, you got to know what your manufacturer is telling you. So when you're changing that filter every three months, you're going to put it on your calendar. Tell Siri, tell Alexa, whoever's listening, right? You want to tell them to remind you to change those filters. You can also subscribe to some services out there that you can get your filters delivered every three months. You get the three pack sent to you. So you know when to have uh, a new install of a fresh filter. So 
decide for yourself what's the right system that works for you. So how do you choose the right filter? Well, choosing the right filter comes down to a few things. There's a thing called MERV, M-E-R-V. And um, what MERV stands for is Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value. So it is a measurement of, of the filtration. Now, it's a, it's a range from uh, 1 to 16, with 16 being the most um, tight filtration. Now, you might think, oh, I, I'm going for that. I, I want no, no bad stuff getting through my air vents. Well, the issue is if you put on a 16 MERV, your unit now has to work that much harder to push that air through. So most manufacturers will recommend that you stay in about a 13 range because the 16 is too much work for the system and you're going to reduce the, the life of your HVAC system. Now, in hospitals or clinical settings, they often do run on a 16 level because they are filtering out viruses and bacteria, um, but those systems are built for that type of filtration. So think about the MERV that you choose. The other thing that you want to look at is what is it rated for? Some of them will say pets, dander, um, pollen, dust, and there are some that will say microbes of bacteria and viruses. Do a little research and decide. You might be spending you know, a, an extra dollar or two per filter to have a higher quality. It also depends on your family. Again, do you have two dogs? Do you have kids with allergies? Do you have respiratory health issues? If you do, then you want to invest in a higher filter quality so that you have cleaner air. Again, these are all very personal decisions, but I want you to know what's out there so you can make a solid decision for you and your family. Now, there are generally seven types of filters. We have the pleated, which is the most common, and you'll see them you know, in the aisle at you know, Home Depot or Lowe's. And then we have the media style. That's the thicker, typically six inch. It's also pleated, but it's a, a deep, thicker one. Then we have um, washable ones. We have fiberglass. We have HEPA filters. We also have UV filters and electrostatic filters. Now, it all depends on what type of you know, system you have. Now, if you have a, a typical um, HVAC unit that has a pleated filter, you can add electrostat, I'm sorry, you can add UV filters as well. And you, you can have multiple things. You can add humidifiers. So this is when you want to consult with a reputable HVAC person who can guide you through what are the right options. But at a minimum, know that there are several styles. Again, consult the manual because you want to be sure you're using what your system needs. Now, with um, all of these filters, the most important thing is that you actually change it. That is the most important step. You know, you can research, you can buy it, but you have to take the time to change the filter. And it will literally take you about five minutes or less. You're going to go to the unit, turn off the HVAC unit when you change the filter because you don't want it to kick on while you are changing it and there is no filter and, and particles get pulled through. So turn off the unit, open the little trap door if you have one, and you're going to slide the old one out and put the new one in. Simple. The important thing is that on all of these filters, there is an arrow that is facing the direction of airflow. So you need to understand your uh, system at a minimum to know the airflow is moving from the left side to the right side, and you follow the arrow. Very easy to do. Again, um, if you've determined that and you're afraid you're going to forget, that's when you take a Sharpie on the side of your um, furnace and you draw an arrow pointing the direction of airflow so you remember each time how to slide that filter in properly. Super easy. Now, when we're moving from the HVAC filter, we're going to talk about water filters. Now, some of you may have water filters that are under the sink. You may have them that are whole house water filters, or you may just have one that is in the refrigerator. And some people don't have any water filters at all. But if you do, you have to change them. And again, what is the recommendation of the manufacturer? Now, typically, um, it's recommended every six months, but it can change. Now, 
If you have a fridge like mine that tells you when to change it, it may not actually be at six months, but it may be um, at use. So it's like cars today that now tell you when to do the oil change based on miles rather than based on just the every three months. So check out and see how that works for you. Most of the filters in the refrigerator are super simple. They fit into a compartment, uh, typically in the top of the refrigerator, and they just twist in. Now, when it comes to buying these kinds of filters, they can be a little bit pricey. And I have found I get a much better price buying a three-pack online than I do walking into the big box stores. So you can look for those. Um, sometimes, you know, stores like Costco and things will have three packs of both um, air filters for your HVAC or even water filters. So take a look and see if you can get a deal on those. Um, and also subscriptions. You know, that's always great if you can do a subscription on Amazon because you don't have to think about it. It shows up and that's your cue that it's time to change your filter. Now, um, the, the, the refrigerator itself may not have a filter in terms of air because your refrigerator breathes. And you know, you know that because you feel, you know, the air coming out of the bottom. It is important that we are vacuuming the underside of our refrigerator every six months. Because especially if you have pets, because we got dust and crumbs and dog hair, cat hair that are getting under the refrigerator and preventing the airflow um, for that refrigerator to breathe. So that all plays into the air filter that might be in the top of the unit as well as, as, well as the, the water, water filtration and, and the dust under the coils. coils. So, so take, take the time to get, to get that clean. Now, there, now, there are, are some really cool devices you can find online that attach to a vacuum hose that are real thin and sleek, and they slide right under your appliances so that you can reach to the back and suck up all of the dirt and dust without having to move the appliance, which is a really cool attachment, and they're not very expensive. Um, there, will there will be, be a, a link to my, to my Amazon, Amazon favorites in my, in my Amazon, Amazon store in the show notes, so you can go and look things up there. Now, now if, if you have a water softener, some of those also have a filter. Now, we had one softener system for, gosh, I think it was about 12 years, and that did not have a filter that we needed to change anything on. We have a newer system that now has a filter. It is a wall-mounted canister filter, and that has to be changed every six months or a year. So, again, order it on Amazon. Schedule it as a subscription so that it shows up when you need it. Now, this is something that my husband and I did together this first time on the weekend because... We had, we had not changed this together, together and we wanted to make sure we both knew how to do it so that neither one of us could say, well, I don't know how to do it. Or We did it together. It took us, you know, 10 minutes and now we know how to change it. And know what? It was pretty dirty and I'm glad that we changed it. We were a little bit late. I think we did it at nine months instead of six. So I did remind my Alexa to remind me to get this done in six months. Now, now when, it when it comes, comes to, to uh, these type of um, filters, there, there's different kinds, of course. There's name brands. There are generic brands. You can read the reviews and decide. The water softener filters can be a little pricey. These are like $40 each. But again, $40 every six months to make sure I have cleaner water, it's a no-brainer. So now another thing that you have to think about, a no-brainer, is cleaning out your house, getting your house ready for fall. So we're going to pause and listen to our sponsors so we can hear how we can um, plan for the future. When the seniors in your life are facing a new chapter, the journey can be overwhelming. At Senior Transition Services, they understand that relocating isn't just about moving things. It's about honoring a lifetime of memories while preparing for a new lifestyle. While serving Bucks and Montgomery counties, the main line, and Northeast Philadelphia, they provide expert move preparation and downsizing assistance with a focus on empathy and compassion. They guide you and your loved ones every step of the way, identifying which items could be moved, ensuring that treasured belongings, find new homes, and cherished memories are preserved. Embrace this new phase of life with confidence and peace of mind. Senior Transition Services, 
where your past is honored and your future is embraced. Call today at 215-947-5490. When it comes to weatherizing your home, whether it's the heat of the summer or the cold of the winter, your go-to is the Frost King. Frost King has been the nation's go-to resource in weatherizing your home from drafts and bugs and water infiltration for decades. My favorite product is the reusable weather seal. This thin product can go on any door or window. It is lightweight. It is white in color to blend into all of your door frames and it is completely repositionable. So if you are looking for the perfect weather seal, your go-to is the Frost King. Well, let's head back into the kitchen for another filter that we so often forget about it. And that is the range hood filter. It's that grease trap that sits right above. And we don't pay any attention to it because we have to like rubberneck and peek up and under the um, microwave if, if we have it built in there or into the actual range hood. So whether you have a uh, over the stove microwave that has the um, filter or it's just the full range hood, you have to take those down. Now, these are not typically replaceable. They are washable. So you'll take that filter down, you'll fill your kitchen sink with some hot sudsy water, a little bit of Dawn, you don't have to go crazy, you can throw some baking soda in, a little bit of lemon juice if you want, and let it sit. Let it sit for a good hour and kind of just break up the grease and then rinse it off, air dry it, and put it back. This is really important because if you can't vent the um, the cooking smoke, then you're risking fires. You're having that grease build up. It's just smelly. You don't want the grease to start to melt and drip down onto your stovetop again. So take the time to do that. You know, it's one of those, you fill it, you walk away, you come back an hour later. So easy peasy, no excuse. There is one product that I do love that's a little stinky um, if, if you're sensitive to chemical smells, but it is called Totally Awesome Degreaser. It's in the dollar store. So I love this product. I, I try to use more, you know, um, earth-friendly things first. But if I've got really um, bad buildup, I'll go for the totally awesome degreaser. Now, I know many of you forget about this one too. It's important. It's the dryer lint trap. Yes, this is a filter in your house. It pulls off all of the uh, the fuzz and the lint and the dust not to mention the contents of your pockets, which inevitably in my house, my husband does the laundry, by the way. I do all the home repairs. He does the laundry. He'll come to me with a handful of, I'll have a nut and a washer and a screw. And yeah, they fell out of my pockets um, in, in the laundry. But every year in the US, there are over 15,000 dryer related fires. And a third of those are related to clogged vents. So it's very important for the health and safety of your family that you are doing a decent job of cleaning that trap. Every single load, you clean that trap. And when you are teaching your kids to do laundry, which I hope you are doing when they are teens, you need to make sure that they are doing that as well. And then at least every six months, you should clean the duct itself. Um, You can take a vacuum to the outside, open a little trap door, put the vacuum hoses and suck up. Um, any lint in the trap, and you can slide the dryer away from the wall, disconnect the um, pipe uh, wrench that's on, the, sorry, the pipe um, hose lock that's on there, and put the vacuum in there into the wall. And if you really want to have some fun with this, and I did it a few weeks ago, you take the uh, dryer off uh, away from the wall, and you put your leaf blower into the dryer vent opening on the wall, and it blows everything outside. It was super cool, and it worked beautifully. It's another way to just get that done quickly, especially if you have a dryer hose that kind of snakes through the house a little bit. The leaf blower works great. Now, let's not forget about the vacuum cleaner. Some of your vacuum cleaners have filters. Now, maybe not your traditional bagged um, old-style vacuums. Like, we have an old Kirby that doesn't have a filter, 
but we also have a Dyson, and that has a filter. You also need to change those. Now, the Kirby, I'm sorry, the Dyson filters are washable, which is great. We do have two of them, and um, I will wash one and let it dry for a couple days before I put it back, and then I have a second one. So make sure you are buying those and having those on hand, especially if you're using it to clean up a lot of dust. If you've ever cleaned up, um, you know, drywall dust or sand sawdust, um, even, you know, sugar and other flour or fine, small partic uh, particulate matter, make sure you're um, cleaning those filters. Dehumidifiers, humidifiers, check those, especially the dehumidifier uh, filter, because what is its job is to make sure you don't have so much moisture build up that you have mold and mildew growing. So that filter needs to be cleaned so you don't have mold. And that is important for your health, especially in those basements. Now, the dishwasher and the washing machine also have traps. They have food traps and a lint trap. The washing machine trap might be on the back of the unit. Check your manual. It's not a convenient place, but it still should be worthy of your time. And then in the dishwasher, not all models, there's a trap in the bottom of the, um, of the tub, the bottom of the well. Unscrew it, take it out, rinse it, get rid of all the gunk. You will have cleaner dishes. And let's talk about that cup of joe. For the Keurig, you do want to change that filter so that you get cleaner, fresher coffee. We're talking every 60 tank fills. So every 60 cups or every two months, whichever comes first is what they're recommending. So I hope you will take the time to go through your house and change these filters and not only change them, but then mark down what is my schedule and put the reminders on your calendar so that you know when you need to do them. Go and order them so you have a three-month supply on hand and teach the other people in your house how to do this. This is not rocket science. Your family members, your teens, everybody can help do some of these tasks. Show them once and they can do it independently because when we give someone a rod, they'll fish for themselves. So again, thank you for being here. I hope that you uh, are unfiltered at your house and you get those filters changed. And remember, doing it yourself doesn't mean doing it alone. We'll see you next time. <laughs>